Welcome to my best of three sideboard guide. Every week I like to cover one of the top eight um, standard decks off of MTG Goldfish. And we've got Domain and Mono Red Aggro left before we've kind of covered everything. Um, Timur Control I want to do at some point, but right now the data is a little bit lackluster. So um, if you're new here, what I do is I like to lean on Untapped, which is a tracker and um, this way we can kind of take away the bias of what what you should be doing on each sideboard um, for each matchup. And it's definitely not the end all be all, right? It, it, I want this just to be a useful resource for your own sideboard guide strategies, and it gives you a good starting place. So with that, let's get started. So um, the domain list that I'm going to be reviewing this week is from week six before I took my vacation on uh, in South Africa. And uh, so we're running four copies of Up the Beanstalk, um, one copy of Imidane's Recruiter, three copies of Spelunking, four copies of Topiary Stomper, four copies of Archangel of Wrath, three copies of Invasion of Zendikar, four copies of Sunfall, four copies of Leyland Binding, four copies of Herd Migration, three copies of Atraxa, which is a pretty standard list. Um, the Spelunking, I think, is a little bit new, and the Imidane's Recruiter, I think, was made by Ali Eldrazi, <laughs> apparently. I, I had a comment and somebody told me that. Um, the sideboard, we've got two copies of Destroy Evil, we've got three copies of Negate, two copies of Kutzil's Flanker, two copies of the Wandering Emperor, four copies of Temporary Lockdown, and two copies of Jace the Perfected Mind. So that, with that in mind, let's uh, get into the data. All right, so the reason why I started to do this was because I was frustrated with the sideboard guides that I was able to find on Google. A lot of them are just opinions. Um, some of them, you know, they contradict one another. Uh, <laughs> and a lot of them are behind paywalls. So the re yeah, so with this in mind, I decided like, okay, let's let's look at like what, how does the matchup look on with data, right? And uh, so what we can do here is we can look at tracker data and look at how the decks have been doing against the other archetypes. And so here, top of the list, you know, we got like Archangel of Wrath. Um, again, I'm going to be doing this for the MTG Goldfish. So just the most common matchup in the tournament scene right now is Demir Midrange. And um, we do have a couple of cards that are lacking in data, like the Wandering Emperor. But it gives us a decent idea about what to look for. To an extent, right? There are limitations to this um, approach. Um, but we can see here that the uh, like Spelunking has no data. The Temporary Lockdown is the worst card on the list. It is a very fav favorable matchup. And uh, Temporary Lockdowns are, uh, you know, there's just barely enough data for that one. Um, so anyway, uh, the other way, the other thing I like to do is look at alternative lists. So for the archetype, what are some of the options that are being run in other domain decks that aren't in this one? And so we can see here we have uh, Virtue of Persistence would be a really good card to bring in, as well as Depopulate. And some uh, some versions of domain were running Populate as an additional wrath to the Sunfalls. And then the other thing that we can do is we can look at the win rate of all archetypes against Demir Midrange with the list from Domain. And this allows us to kind of pull out some outliers sometimes. And um, here, nothing really stands out for what we should be doing. So my starting strategy for sideboarding against Demir Midrange would be to bring in the three copies of Temporary Lockdown. You could bring in four if you wanted to. Um, but if we bring in three, we can cut the three spelunking and this, um, and then if we have virtue persistence or depopulate, we could bring those in and temporary lockdown is good against the spyglass siren, the deep cavern bat and the fairy mastermind. And sometimes Lasav. some versions run Lasav, sometimes not. Um, so there's enough targets that temporary lockdown does slow down their strategy. And then spelunking Demir is an aggressive strategy. It's, it's, I, I call it Demir Midrange, but some people call it Demir Aggro, and it's really close, right? It's a very fast-paced midrange strategy, in my opinion. Um, so Spelunking is a little bit slow. It's hard to take a turn off, especially just like Invasion of Zendikar. It is definitely better on the play than when you are on the draw. So after you, you know, lost your first, or won your first match and you're now on the draw, you could take out the Spelunking and bring in the temporary lockdowns. 
So we repeat this process again now here for Boros Convoke, which was the number two most common matchup in the tournament scene. And um, here, top of the list, we've got the Wandering Emperor, so we should, we should be bringing in two copies of the Wandering Emperor. And then we can also see Temporary Lockdown is the second best card. So we should be bringing in the four copies of the Temporary Lockdown. And then um, our worst card here is the Up the Beanstalk and um, Spelunking, I think, right at the bottom of the list here. So um, those would be the ones I think we should take out. Uh, Boros Convoke is uh, what, what there's a lot of options here for alternative strategies that aren't being included. So top of the list here, we've got Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. And if you go back and you look at the week eight uh, review that I did of the meta, the domain list from that week was actually deciding to bring in Elish Norn, Mother of Machines uh, to counteract the Boros Convoke. So um, Depopulate would be another good one to bring in in this matchup. Arch of Otherworldly Light, uh, Case of the Locked Hothouse, Get Lost, and Nissa Ascended Animist. And then as far as all strategies go, there are a couple that kind of come up, uh, come up here. For example, the Negate, uh, the Destroy Evil, and the Jace. None of them are particularly good, though. They're all below 50% win rate, but they are something to keep in mind. So for this one, we've got kind of an extensive sideboard, and um, you can see this This is a difficult matchup for Domain um, because Boros Con Convoke can rebuild off of a Sweeper relatively easily. So uh, bring in the two copies of the Wander Emperor, bring in the four copies of the Temporary Lockdown, and bring in the three copies of Negate. Um, and then take out the four copies of Up the Beanstalk, three copies of Spelunking, and three copies of Invasion of Zendikar. Again, the missing options are Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, Depopulate, March of Otherworldly Light, which is really good for sniping the artifact that they're... So when they go for Gleeful Demolition, you can remove the token. March of Otherworldly Light works quite well against Boros Convo. Um, Case of the Locked Hothouse, Get Lost, and Nissa Ascended Animist. So uh, basically, we're just focusing on early disruption and removal. So the Wander Emperor can remove something and exiles it and gains you two life. You can also create a 2-2 that blocks relatively well um, off of all of the 1-1s one that Boros Convoke is making. Temporary Lockdown is the bread and butter answer, right? I mean, uh, it depends on whether or not you're running two, three, or four copies of Temporary Lockdown. Bringing all four in is going to really help you against the Boros Convoke matchup. And then Negate was one of the ones that, like... I wanted you know to talk about a little bit um it can hit war leaders call or the case of the gateway express and especially war leaders call is one of those cards that is particularly good against the domain control matchup so bringing in the gate we can kind of plan to try to catch them playing their war leaders call and then yeah up the beanstalk and spelunking are both just too slow in this matchup and then invasion of zendikar again is too slow especially on the draw Against Esper Midrange, um, this one's another one that's a relatively favorable matchup for Domain. And we can see that, again, the Temporary Lockdown is making it in just barely at the bottom of the list. And then we kind of hit into no data. Again, I think I'm going to recommend taking out the Spelunking, even though the data is missing. Um, as far as alternative lists go, the only option that's really missing here is Go for the Throat. Be a good one to bring in against, uh, to snipe their Rafine. And, um... Then we've also got, uh, for all archetypes, we can see Destroy Evil would be a good one to bring in against this matchup as well. So what I'm going to recommend, though, do, to do is just to bring in the three copies of Temporary Lockdown and take out the three copies of Spelunking. And again, this would be one that I would like to bring in, go for the throat if it was available. Uh, Temporary Lockdown hits Deep Cavern Bat, Dinnick, Pious Apprentice, and Fairy Mastermind. And alternatively, you could sideboard in Destroy Evil to hit Wedding Announcement in Virtue of Loyalty. Um, but I think personally that I'm going to be leaning towards suggesting maybe removing Destroy Evil uh, instead of bringing in, in this matchup. And then um, Spelunking, uh, sorry, this one's supposed to be a minus three. And this one is, once again, it's just better on the play. Okay, so now for the mirror match, and the good news about this list specifically is that it's doing better against the other domain decks. And um, we can see here that the worst card that has data is Herd Migration, and uh, as well as Leyline Binding coming in. And then um, 
yeah, uh, then we hit no data and then alternative strategies here. We've got no other options that pop out in the top 10. Yeah, um, so that's good. We're not missing anything that other domain decks are running that are good to get in the mirror match. And then as far as all strategies go, we can see the classic like negate is a really great option to bring in against domain decks, as well as Jace the Perfected Mind, which is a good alternative win condition. So for domain, I recommend we bring in the three copies of Negate, the two copies of Jace the Perfected Mind. We cut the four copies of Herd Migration and one Leyline Binding and have no missing options. So Negate is really good for t attacking your opponent's Planeswalkers as well as uh, destroying their Sunfalls. And then Jace the Perfected Mind is an alternative win condition because the domain versus domain is a very grindy matchup as you typically take turns playing Herd Migration and then Sunfalls and timing that. And uh, so Jace, a lot of times it will come down to mill, especially because Atraxa digs through your deck. So um, as for Herd Migration, I think we should just pull it out because it's answered by our opponent's Sunfalls as well as their sideboarded negates. So we just get rid of that entirely. And then Ley Lane Binding also can be targeted by other Ley Lane Bindings. So you kind of have this game of like chicken with who will play it first. So we can just cut one of those out. Versus Azorius Control, um, we can see that this is a difficult matchup. It is a control versus control matchup, and they just have more control tools. And um, notably, Timur, Timur Control is more popular than Azorius Control, but um, it should have a similar sideboard plan to Azorius Control. And so we're looking to take out Sunfall because there's not a whole lot of creature threats that Sunfall is going to hit. And then we could also take out Topiary Stomper. Hit into no data. And then the alternative strategies, we do have a missing option of Nissa Ascended Animist, which would be good to bring in because the Planeswalkers get around the board wipes and the Sunfalls, the farewells of our opponent. So Nissa would be good if it was an option, not in this list. And then all if, if we look at all archetypes we see here, Negate is another one that should be brought in, as well as Jace the Perfected Mind is over 50% and um, gives you, you know, it coming down to who mills who, right? So three, my, my sideboard recommendations here are to bring in three copies of Negate, two copies of Jace the Perfected Mind, uh, the four copies of Sunfall, and one Topiary Stomper. And if you did decide to run Nissa Ascended Animus, this would be a good time to bring it in. So Negate is really good for attacking your opponent's Planeswalkers like Jace and the Wanderer Emperor, as well as Sunfalls. And then Jace the Perfected Mind is an alternative win condition. Um, if, if we can't get through their board wipes, we can mill them out. And we've got... Uh, Taking out Sunfall because there's not a really great target and really like using it to wipe out a couple of mites off the board from Mirix feels really bad. <laughs> and Topiary Stomper is usually hard to get through um, on their turn because of No More Lies and Make Disappear. So we can cut out one Topiary Stomper. Versus Mono Red Aggro, we can see this is a difficult matchup for Domain as well. Um, and then uh, we do have a fair amount of data about this one. But... One of the things that kind of stands out to me is that there isn't anything that's particularly good in this version against Mono Red Aggro. So the player who was uh, piloting this was probably hoping to not bump into Mono Red Aggro, as it is not a super common matchup in the tournament scene. Um, we do have a couple of missing options, which are slightly better, but still kind of bad uh, in the... Um, domain lists in general. So we have Courier's Briefcase, which you commonly see in the best of one versions because you're going to encounter more mono red aggro, as well as Go for the Throat and Virtue of Persistence, which gives you that early point removal. And uh, especially Virtue of uh, Persistence gives you a little bit of that life gain and stabilization. And then uh, if we open everything up to all archetypes, we can see again that nothing uh, in particular stands out. Maybe a Destroy Evil, but again, it's below 50% and same with the Negates. So against Mono Red Aggro, what I recommend doing is hope to not come up against it. So no real sideboard options come out to me in the data. Um, if you did have Courier's Briefcase or Go for the Throat or Virtue of Persistence, the, those would probably be worth playing against Mono Red Aggro. And then uh, Golgari Midrange, we can see this one is a, pot, is a uh, very favorable matchup for Domain, and was actually the reason why we saw the Golgari Midrange archetype disappear was because of how popular Domain was and how good Domain was against this matchup. 
So uh, temporary lockdown at the top of the list here. So we're going to want to bring in at least three. Uh, we're going to want to bring in our copies of temporary lockdown. And then we hit into the no data. So again, I think spelunking is the one that I have my eyes on for cutting, although I have to do it with an asterisk because there is uh, low data for the spelunking option. As far as alternative strategies go, there's a Warrior's Briefcase is another one that helps slow down as well as ramp to your Sunfalls. Make sure you don't get steamrolled early. And then we have Nissa Ascended Animist, which is particularly good because of the Destroy Enchantment aspect of it, where you can hit their like Virtue of Persistence, um, as well as just this recurring threat. And they have removal, but a lot of times don't have the removal specific for Planeswalkers outside of Shieldred's Edict. And then um, as far as all archetypes go, nothing really stands out here as something that we should be bringing in. So <laughs> against Golgari midrange, what I'm going to recommend doing is bringing in the three temporary lockdowns and taking out the spelunkings. And a lot of the earlier lists of domain that I, I was looking at uh, tended to run the two copies of temporary lockdown and one copy of depopulate and kind of skew more towards white instead of the spelunking. So we're kind of seeing there are a couple of matchups that you might want to consider doing that instead of where this list went. Um, but sideboarding back into the white when you need it is is an okay option. And then again, if you have Courier's Briefcase, Nissa Ascended Animus, both of these would be good to bring in against Golgari Midrange. And then um, so Temporary Lockdown is good because primarily it gets rid of rid, uh, Mosswood Dread Knight. So there, we, there have been a couple of uh, explorations like the Anoint with Affliction, I believe, that um, Exiled, that was particularly good against the Mosswood Dread Knight as well. But Temporary lo Lockdown works well enough and does kind of a similar strategy. And then again, Spelunking, the ramp of the lands entering untapped, uh, untapped from Spelunking isn't particularly necessary against Golgari. Um, Golgari is rather slow, and again, it comes down to kind of this play versus draw. So of, of the matchups, like Spelunking is better in the control matchups and the mirror match against uh, other control decks, where usually the player that has the most mana to work with has the advantage in that situation. So in against the other mid-range deck, it's not as good, in my opinion. Again, that's another one with an asterisk because the data does not really support that. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to avoid opinions, but I do think that that one, um, usually you'd be looking at taking out the invasion of Zendikar on, on the play. And um, so I, I think that Spelunking here kind of fits into that same idea. So of note, we uh, one sideboard option didn't show up at, in the data at all. And that was Kutzil's Flanker. And uh, that's not super surprising because that one's kind of a niche sideboard option that you bring in against specific graveyard strategies of like the Timur Control or its predecessor, the Soltai Landfall deck, both which try to cycle the lands from their graveyard. So Kutzil's Flanker is one that you're going to want to bring in against the Timur Control matchup that was missing in the data. Um, Destroy Evil only came in as an option against Esper Midrange and Boros Convoke. And even there, there were better options. And that's why I think maybe we should play around with the idea of removing Destroy Evil in the sideboard. And if I remember correctly, that is actually what we saw in week eight with the one that won the top three of the standard challenge. So uh, always nice to see when the data lines up with what the pros are doing. So uh, as far as the missing options go, I do think that Nissa Depopulate, Virtue Persistence, and Go for the Throat could be be interesting inclusions. I do, if I remember correctly, the one from week eight was running the uh, long goodbye, which is the removal spell that can destroy something three or less, but can't be countered. And so that would, uh, similar to kind of like go for the throat, give you that spot removal, which would be helpful in uh, specific matchups. So depopulate would be really good for Demir midrange and the Boros convoke, um, just giving you another board wipe to kind of get rid of their, you know, their ability to rebuild. Um, the Virtue of Persistence would be good in Demir Midrange and Mono Red Aggro to give you some stabilization from the early aggression. And then Nissa would be good against Boros Convoke Azor uh, because of the Destroy Enchantment for both Case of the Gateway Express and War Leader's Call. And then good against Azorius Control because it has a harder time dealing with the Planeswalkers. And same with Golgari Midrange outside of Shieldred's Edict. So Go for the Throat would be good against Mono Red Aggro, give you some point removal to answer some of their early aggression, as well as against Esper Midrange to be able to attack. So if you've made it to this point, thank you very much for listening to my best of three sideboard guide for domain. 
Um, please let me know what has been working for you and what you think. Uh, I do think sideboards always make interesting discussions, and I do like to hear back from you guys. Again, this is, uh, you know, this is a a tool I want to uh, to help you guys with. So it's it's not something that's like written in stone, and um, but I do think there's some interesting insights. And this is a weekly series, so if you'd like more content like this in the future, remember to click like and subscribe. And as I mentioned before, I'll be covering Mono Red Aggro next week so that we can kind of round out the uh, top eight and get ready for Outlaws at Thunder Junction. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing how that will shake up the standard meta, especially because I've heard that there are some rotations that are occurring for Outlaws at Thunder Junction. We usually see rotations in September, so I haven't looked into this to verify whether or not that's true, but I've heard something like Voldarian Epicure is going to be rotating out in uh, Outlaws at Thunder Junction. So I'll look into that and try to figure out um, what, what the deal is there. So uh, as always, good luck crushing your matches or RCQs, and uh, maybe I'll see you on the ladder.